Not yet. about YouTube? YouTube is on. And I just hurt myself. Okay, YouTube is live. What do you mean you just hurt yourself? I hurt myself. What do you mean? Oh, in here? Yeah. I see. <laughs> Hi, everyone. If you're tuning in, welcome to our live event. We're just setting up a little bit um, on our studio for our setup. Sorry for the delay. We actually did this recording in the morning. However, there was no sound. So now we are redoing the whole thing again. Woohoo! So if you're tuning in, welcome. This is our live event that's happening the next weekend as well as the following weekend as well. We are going to learn how to do Furushiki gift wraps. And here I'm just setting up and making sure everything looks fine. It seems like the sound is going through, so that's great. Right? Okay. That's live. And actually, I don't need this screen. Should kill AI too. not closing. It's probably asking if you want to save something. Shit. Okay. Never mind. I just closed it. Is that okay? Good. Good up. All right. Okay. You can help me monitor the chat, I guess, if there is anything. all right hi everybody welcome to my live stream the second time of this holiday season my name is stephanie and i'm the founder of my brand sutaibu we do a lot of different types of products um, such as art prints and furushiki gift wraps uh, we started our company last year in 2019 so we haven't quite do a lot of live streams since then as we have been doing in-person craft shows in Los Angeles, California area. And this year, as we know, a lot of things happened with the pandemic. We're not able to go to a live craft shows anymore um, like last year. So we're doing our online live this month for three weekends. Yesterday, we just started with a lot of technical difficulties as well as this is our very beginning of our live stream event um, we're still trying to get the hangs of things so every weekend we'll be learning furushiki um, furushiki uh, is a very versatile way of wrapping different things um, not just gift wrapping it can also be infused in your daily life such as wearing as a tote bag or carrying um, a picnic basket turning it into a picnic blanket so those are a little just um, good things about furushiki i'm gonna dive into the little history about furushiki So the history of Furushiki actually started many years ago, at least a thousand years ago. It's not something I have invented myself. It actually began from the Japanese uh, emperor uh, level where when they have access to fabrics. Um, back then, the fabric is actually a luxury item. So it's not as accessible as we have it today. When they had it as a luxury goods, what would you do? You obviously wanted to show it off, right, among your friends. Like if you have uh, brand name handbags uh, today, 
you won't want to keep it in the house right you want to wear it and kind of style it up with your outfit and kind of show it off in public right so it's the same thing back in the day when have when they have luxury goods such as uh, textiles they use textiles to gift wrap uh, among their uh, higher up level emperors and they also decorate their interior with a lot of textiles just like the european um, ancient history they use a lot of fabric in their fashion as well so the idea is very similar when it comes to luxury items back in the day so fushiki um, became more accessible among the common people later on when fabric became more accessible and cheaper to afford so as you can see the pictures on the bottom is missing too because it didn't generate um, as i output the pdf but you can still see some of the examples where um, the people were wrapping their luggages um, in furushiki form and transporting goods uh, within places in furushiki style so furushiki is basically a square cloth uh, and it can be any kinds of fabric really um, today as we have more um, you know technology to invent different kinds of fabric durability and structure but back in the back in the day in japan they use cotton double-sided fabric um, as their typical furushiki uh, fabrics they use I'm just running out of battery here on one side of my camera, so I'm just going to charge it quickly. All right, so going back to the history is the traditionally they use cotton and double sided. So today we can use any kinds of fabric um, to gift wrap or wrap your little tote bag such as cotton or any durable fabric. I wouldn't recommend any knit fabric because um, obviously it's knit, it will drape and it will not hold the structure, whatever is wrapped inside. All right. And previously yesterday we had learned how to furushiki wrap two bottles it can be you know wine bottles it can be any types of bottles um, you want to wrap those were the techniques that we learned yesterday's uh, live show if you are interested to go you can go back to the live stream to watch we watch it again it's now safe under our youtube uh, library all right if you're wondering what our youtube handle is it's just our company name without a space sutaibu all right or you can find the link in our website on our website we also learn how to gift wrap a box um, as you see i also decorate it with an origami floral bouquet which i also learned yesterday if you're interested again tune back in every weekend will be a little bit different so if you want to learn new techniques next week um, come on back in again but today we're going to learn three different styles one we're going to learn how to wrap a single bottle with a little floral decoration on it so it's all attached into the same fa fabric there's no other accessories right typically we would wrap gifts separately with ribbons with flowers and all those different things but this particular technique is just one fabric with uh, rubber band also if you do have uh, any materials laying around that you can use such as like a scarf you know like our zip scarves you can also use that as a gift wrap and obviously if you pick your fabric you want to think about how the end user is going to use your fabric right so picking a nice fabric would be an added value gift to the special person you're giving the gift to or if you're giving something a little bit cheaper inside you can dress it up with a higher end neck scarf um, or a silk scarf as a gift wrap instead of using traditional you know paper or other ways to gift wrap that will only get used once gift wrapping with furushiki allows you to have that um, flexibility and versatility to reuse over and over again 
And then the second item we're going to learn to wrap is wrapping a basket. Um, why do I suggest, uh, why do I want to demonstrate how to wrap a basket is because sometimes we, you know, may have our own little garden we want to give out gifts, um, give our little produce uh, that we harvest as gifts to our fans and friends and families. This will actually be a good way to also gift it out. And another format would be if you wanted to go visit someone um, with anything that's more tangible that they can consume like fruits or any um, other edible like baked goods or anything that you want to put in a basket. This format will be a good way to carry it and also, um, you know, send it out without the need of using disposable or single use boxes or anything like that. You know, you can wash the fabric so you can reuse over and over again. And the basket inside can serve as a dish, right? When you deliver to the person you're delivering it to. And the third item we're going to learn today is uh, wrapping with a cube box. A cube box is basically a square box. And you know, a lot of our gifts these days when we buy them, they come in a box shape. So learning how to wrap a box, it will also help you to make dress up your uh, gifts without needing to use wrapping paper. So Fushiki actually has a little standard rule behind their, you know, little art, cra arts and craft uh, culture. So in order to find the right size Fushiki, there is a formula to it. And it's not very difficult. All you need to find is the longest length of the product that you plan to wrap and make sure that length is when it times when you times three of that length will fit within the diagonal length of the square cloth. In a second, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to find that right size. But basically, you want the height of the objects that you plan to wrap. Uh, the the height three times of the height of the objects to fit within the diagonal length of the square. All right. All right, so as I mentioned, we are going to learn how to wrap a bottle here with a flower in the front. See, these are the little leaves on the side and you pumped up a little floral thing. So it really depends on the types of fabric you choose, right? For me, I chose this fabric because these are the fabrics that I wanted to show you how it would look. Um, these are Fushiki that comes in different size that we offer on our shop. And this particular one is our orchid print. So it's or orchid floral that I drew as a art print and then translated into a Fushiki form. And this is style one that we'll be learning. And then this is the other style with a little basket. I'll show you the inside in a second. It also has a little handle that you can transport it around. And then the third style we're gonna learn is this gift wrapping cube right here with a little decoration on top. Also attached into the same form and they don't have to add any more accessories or go out to get ribbons or you know, tape or scissors or anything like that. Just need one piece of fabric and that's it. So we're going to learn how to find the right size for Ushiki. So here's my Furushiki cloth. As I've mentioned, this is a square cloth. So all you need to find out is the diagonal length of your square cloth. For this particular example that I'm showing today, which is a bottle, a cute box, and a basket 
right? So we need to find those um, items length, the longest length. So for, let's say we're gonna start with the box today first. You wanna find the longest length. So if it's a cube, then obviously it will be just one side of here. I'm gonna just give you a close up view. It looks like the connection went off. So I'm just gonna go back to my overhead view here. Nope, mm -hmm. did not work. I'm not sure why. So I'm just gonna go back to my overhead view here. So the cube here, you wanna find the longest length. So obviously you just have to find one side and that will be the longest length. So this box, you will wanna be able to, like the three times of this length, fix it, please. Three times of this length will have to fit within the diagonal here. Okay, so basically one, two, three, so it fits, right? This is a 20 inch Furushiki that we have. So the diagonal length is a little bit longer at this 29th uh, inches, I believe, diagonal. So obviously smaller object will require smaller Furushiki. You can wrap anything really with a big cloth. However, you do want to think about the output of it, how it would look, you know. So this will be a good size to wrap this particular style. We're gonna switch back to the front and see if it actually connects. It looks like it got disconnected and we're not sure why. Is, does you see the light here? There's no light here. I need to make sure there's light. Unplug it, plug it back in. If you unplug it, we have to reconnect it. So I don't recommend doing that. All right, sorry for the technical difficulties. But right now we're going to try it real quick. All right, it doesn't work, so we're going to go switch back to our overhead view here. All right, anyway, so we're gonna continue on. Sorry for the interruption. So first you want to place your item right in the center of your furushiki right here. Okay, this technique is actually a lot easier. So that's why we're starting with it. I'm just gonna show that this will be this. And first you will be wrapping across. You pick up your opposite corner and start wrapping with your first knot here. Okay, I'm gonna rewind and do it again. Place your object right in the center of your furushiki diagonally. Okay, and then you pick up the opposite corner and start wrapping. All right. Once you have one knot, you want to go in and do another knot. So you want, ideally you want a square knot. So a square knot basically is not, is the opposite of a dead knot. So when you f um, overlap the ties, it will be going from left to right and right to left. So that will be your square knot. Okay, so when the receiver receive it, it will be easy for them to untie it instead of trying to figure out how to untie your dead knot. Once you have one side, we're gonna do the other side. Okay, again, making sure that it sits right in the middle, you can always anchor it with one of your hands. And the next thing here is to find the corner of your box. And by doing that, you can always use your fingers um, is our view coming back in yet? Sorry about the interruption, but we want to make sure we get some close-up view so you guys can see it. There's lights on for a sec. 
and then it goes away. Okay, I'm just gonna remove this um, screen and then try to add it back in. Yep. It went off again. The light, the LED turned off again. Camera's on. Oh, I think he went back on. Alright guys, sorry for the interruption. Again, we're still trying to figure out our technical parts of our live stream here. So anyway, here we go. Um, I wanted to go back to how we did it in finding your opposite corner drape. So, over here, you want to find your corner by pressing it down with one hand and using your fingers to find the corners. Okay, and then you lift your opposite corners here in order to find this clean edge right here. Okay, and then you want to keep holding on to it and not lose that grip. Do the other side. Now, you kind of want your fabrics to hug tightly close now because you're almost finishing the wrap right so you kind of need to grab it with one hand and fix it with the other hand and once you have that grip go ahead and tie the knot on top okay Again, you want to do a square knot. So square knot is basically the opposite of the that knot. Left over right, right over left. All right, once you have your knots here, you'll see that two of your knots are sitting on each other. Ideally, it doesn't look too good if you don't do anything after you have two knots. Again, it depends, right? What you're wrapping, if you're wrapping a different shape, maybe it looks fine. But for this particular style, we wanted to make a little flower to come out, right? So the next thing you want to do here is, now that you have two of your knots together, you will be taking one I call this a leaf now because now we're turning these into like flower petals like let's call it petals so what you want to do is this is the right side of the fabric the wrong side pick up one and then go under tugging this corner in to an anchor point so you want to find some anchor point within your knot and just kind of slide it in it doesn't have to be perfect because you know, at the end of the day, there's a gift wrap. As long as it stays together, that's what matters, right? And then the user or whoever receives it, right, will appreciate the little gesture you have put together for them. So you do the next one until you're done all the way around. Okay. Same for this one, find the corner, and then tuck it back into your knot. It's kind of tricky when there's so many different folds and layers. Right. Same for this one. Want to fold it in. All right, so again, practice makes it perfect. So the first time doesn't look great. Go back in and redo it. However, I do recommend to have your fra fabric to be nice and straight before you actually wrap the final output. So 
If you do need to practice, go ahead and practice. If you need to iron it out, untie it, and then put it back together. So that's basically it. My knot on top is a little bit looser compared to this one actually. So this one actually looks nicer um, in a way, I think personally, because there's the contrast of stripes on the top and then there's you know open space on the bottom here. Whereas this fabric is the overall print, so you can't quite see what's happening because you can not distinguish between the different uh, print placement, right? So my suggestion is to also think about the types of fabric, the print, um, and the coloration before you actually start wrapping, okay? So there you have it. This is the cube style we have. Put together with Fujiki. The next one we're gonna do is a basket wrap. This is the miniature version of a demonstration I wanted to show you. Obviously basket of fruits or a basket of big goods will be a lot bigger, right? But this is a miniature version so I can show you in a smaller scale. So obviously smaller scale means smaller furushiki as well as smaller basket here. All right, I'm gonna show you what's inside. So here's the little opening. So you open it and then there's actually under flap too. You open the flap. Actually, I place an Asian pear in here as a fruit demonstration. I can't scale down the Asian pear obviously, but you get the idea is you have a basket of fruits or a basket of baked goods or anything that you have made at home you wanted to dress it up instead of using a box or a plastic bag good presentation is also very important so before you actually put the goods in you put the basket in to your furoshiki and then you put the goods and then you cover it up so that's the idea of it right so we're going to learn how to wrap that particular style with this basket here. So again, how we're gonna find the right size furushiki is to find the longest length of your object. So for this one, it will be the width of your basket here. So times it by three, you should sit within your diagonal of your diagonal of this square cloth. So one, two, three will fit with a little bit room left, which is a perfect size for Ushiki. If you want a longer handle on top to carry, you can either add a strap towards the end, you know, by tying the strap in the knots, or you can find a bigger Furushiki to wrap with. Mine is a circular basket, um, but if you have like a different shape basket, um, it will also, you know, distort how the outcome looks. So if you use a box inside, I think it will be a lot more sturdier than a rounded bottom, right? So just kind of think about those little components when you are putting together your fushiki wrap. But this particular example is rounded just because I want to demonstrate to you how you can wrap a basket. Okay, so first we will not wrap the basket because that's the component you add later on as a structure. What you want to do here now is to think about how you want to finish your furushiki um, output. So just going back to the front view a little bit. Um, because this fabric is an overall print, I don't need to worry about, oh, is my handle going to look a certain way or is this covering going to have that print I want it to have at the end? doesn't matter because this is an overall print, right? But if you're using any types of fabrics like this that has a different print in each corner, like there's no print here and then there's print here. Then you have to think about, oh, maybe you do want this to be on the covering side and then this being the handle, right? 
So then if that's the case, you want the empty side, empty print side to be the handle. Then what we're gonna do here is first cross over diagonally with the wrong side of the fabric facing in here, okay? Once you have that down, making sure it kind of lines up nicely and then finding the middle point of your furoshiki again here. It's very important because your basket is going to sit right there. Having that point of reference is important. And then next we are going to find the middle point. Visually find the middle point of this side of the triangle. Okay, same as this one. Okay, roughly be around here. The reason why is because we are basically tying the knots here to house the basket within. So you want your basket to kind of be snug as well as um, wide enough for it to come in but not move around too much, right? So halfway point is actually the perfect point to do the knot right here. And traditionally, I believe that's the rule also to find the middle point if you're doing this particular wrap. All right, the next step is to tie a knot. What I like to do is to hide all my edges. So I usually just put my edges in, like kind of fold it in. Also having a skinnier, skinnier uh, width to tie a knot with is actually easier. So the next step here is to tie a knot here. I'm going to do an overhead view here so you can see that my knot is kind of in the center because this length is similar to this length, right? And you kind of want your knot to be tight. So go ahead and, and tighten your knot right here. Once you have one side, go ahead and do the other side. So again, visually find the middle point here and then start folding your knot. Okay. Again, visually make sure it's in the center, but you also do want your tail to have the same length, right? So you can see this length is about the same in length. And now, before we act, we're almost done here, before you actually finish off, we want to see if the basket will be wide, like if the opening of the fabric will be wide enough for the basket to go in, as well as holding the basket in place. So right now I can visually see that it will sit very well because the width of it is just right here. Let's see if the close up corner, yeah. The width of this knot between these knots will allow it to sit within it fine. So I'm going to first finish off my handle here. So what you want to do here is to come together over here with your tipping point, tipping tail, and start tying a dead knot. No, a square knot or though a square knot will be helpful for you to untie. I think a dead knot will be more secure um, if you do plan on holding it as a handle. Okay, so here's the knot, making sure it's tight. I pull each side once I have the knot in place, right? So this will actually be your little carry your handle. Okay, the next thing we want to do is open up, open up your, I guess you can call this like a little pouch space now. So you open it up and make sure that your folds here are open so when you feed in your basket 
it will sit right in place. And my point of reference is our logo because we print our logo right in the center of our Fushiki. So the next thing here is to fit it in. Right, put it in place. Again, finding the middle point is very important. That's why having that on your fushiki will help you a lot when you're doing your fushiki wrap. Again, you can see I'm struggling a little bit here because my wrap is actually tight to make sure the basket sits in place. You kind of want that, um, but if it's a little bit loose, I think it's okay too, as long as your object inside won't be tilting down and fall off. And here's another reason why you don't want knit fabric. It actually will be able to drape nicely. However, it may not hold the object inside in place securely. So having a fabric that's a little bit more structured will be better. All right, so here I have my logo right in the center. That means my basket is sitting right in the center actually slightly off because I actually, my knot is a little bit too tight here. However, that knot do sit right on the basket edges nicely here, right? So here you have your opening and your basket handle. So now you can place your object inside. I place one giant pair as a gift. Why not, right? And then you can overlap the two openings flaps by closing it here, you know, kind of cover it and protect it. If you want to add any protection towels within it, it will help you to hold the towel in place. Then to finish it off, you just close it. This is kind of like your opening flap. Just like those French ladies when they're going to grocery mar uh, grocery shopping at the farmer's market on their bike, with their bike, the basket, they have this little picnic towel, right? To cover it. The concept is similar. You're covering it, you have your little handle, and that's it. Here you go. You give to your friends and families um, as a little gift. Of course, mine is a miniature, so I think it looks cute, right? Um, if you want it to look even nicer, obviously like hide all these ends like I always like to do. And then not show too much of the underside of the fabric on the bowl. But if you are using double side fabric, then you don't have to worry about that. And then considering how you're presenting, in, presenting the item is very important. As the receiver, you want them to be happy also. Just like when you gift wrap with paper, you want it to look nice. All right, so there you have it. This is the little basket wrap you can do with a 20 inch fushiki with a small basket like this. So it will only house one giant pair. But if you're baking anything small like cookies, right? And you wanna gift them out in a little tray. It doesn't have to be like this bamboo basket. It can be any types of basket that you have that you like to carry those um, items inside. Then you can do this particular wrap. It looks cute. And then the receiver, you can tell them, oh, this is actually what we call fushiki. You can actually wear as a scarf. Actually, 20 inch fabric is the standard neck scarf size and um, they can wear it as um, a headband or a neck scarf or even like a handbag decoration would be nice too all right so there you have it so the next thing we're going to learn here is a single bottle wrap 
as you can see we have only been 40 minutes so it's actually great because our previous session that we didn't capture the video uh, the audio we went too long and we weren't able to cover this particular style so today we're gonna cover the third one as well so we have 20 minutes we will have enough time if you're just joining us in live uh, welcome we are learning how to fushiki gift wrap and it's a technique that you can reuse over and over again instead of discarding like gift wrapping paper all right so again how you find the right size fushiki for this particular one is to find the longest length of the object so for this one it will be the height of the bottle and you want it to fit within the diagonal length of the square cloth when it times three so three times the height of the longest length of the object you plan to wrap to fit within the diagonal space of the fruchiki so this will be a perfect size for that particular this particular wrap we're doing a little flower here and two leaves okay so this style will be a little bit more tricky to wrap so if you want to just watch first before you practice you can always watch back the video to learn each steps along the way and that will be better too you can pause the video and play back again so i need to gather my thoughts on how to wrap this actually because <laughs> i did this yesterday and i was having a little bit of trouble because it's actually very tricky to wrap it um, nice and neat so first you want to again think about the corners that you want to end it with right for me i want to end it with the tab where it has my logo on it so it depends on what fabric you're using think about that if you want to end it with this particular corner like i have here have it face up like this okay and then you want to place your bottle this time you kind of want to start from the middle point also however the suggestion on this particular wrap is so that when you flip your finished corner down it should not pass over the bottom of the object here like you don't want it to cover all the way for instance the reason why is because we want to see this tab again i'm using a overall print so you can't quite see the contrast but it will look nice if your corner actually sits above the bottom of your object here okay so going back you want this tab that you want to finish with to sit above the bottom of the object right so that's where actually you will position your object you have some loose fabric here on top so just go ahead and push it towards the top and now you see you're no longer right in the center of the fruishiki and that is fine okay and um, make sure you keep your object in place hold it there put your bottom pull your bottom corner up and you'll see the bottom corner will be past the top corner because our product our item is not sitting right in the center anymore right that's fine so what you want to do is kind of tuck this under so it's not overlapping all right and now you're gonna overlap here placing your finished corner right there all right making sure it's still right in the center from left to right okay the next thing you want to do is hold it down if you're wrapping a square object like a, a bottle with a box 
then this particular style will also work. However, it will not look like this anymore, right? So if your box, it will be easier for you to hold the box than the model I'm trying to get to is, but your look won't look like this. So just a little bit to think about when you are wrapping gifts too. Anyway, so we're going back to holding, anchoring your bottle right in the center. And the next thing you want to do is grab these ends, both ends. As you wrap, as you hold, I'm going to try to do it without pausing, but I'm going to explain it first before I do it. When you hold it together, you want to at the same time pull the bottle upright. And then what you're going to do is tie a crossover knot in the back of the bottle instead of the front. This is considered now the front of the wrap, right? So here I'm going to do it. I may have to redo it again, but I will show you step by step. So hang her down with your right hand. I like to keep all my edges inside to have a clean skinny tie. So what I would do is kind of, you know, guide my fabric and drape it along. Hold it with one hand, anchor it with that one hand, go to the other side to do your folds again. All right, so here comes the hard part. Maybe I will have to go to the front view. All right, so now I have it hold together with left and right hand, sit up your bottle. This is the tricky part because a lot of times when I do it, my bottles start to tip over. And that's not what you want when you're wrapping a bottle of wine. All right, so now you have your folds together, cross over in the back, which you're seeing right now. Once, and then cross over again. Twice. So you kind of have a, like a little one twist here. One twist. Now you see the front is all messy. It's fine. We'll fix it after. But what we're going to do here is make sure you're, if you're afraid that your bottle is going to tip over, go ahead and lay it flat. However, your bottle is not straight, so it will be tricky to anchor it down. So you kind of want your knot to be close, nice and neat, right? So we kind of pull it left to right, right to left, and pull it here. And then when you're ready, go ahead and do a twisting mold here. Okay, twisting. Do the other side. If you can't, you can't do it at the same time because you have to anchor it down. So one side at a time. Ready? And then you go to the front here. You're gonna, what are we gonna do here is to add a, add a rubber band. We're not gonna tie a knot because then it will be too bulky in the front. We can always fix the folds after. So what we're going to do here is to add a rubber band right in the center. I'm using my hair tie because just so you can see it clearly. I say have it close. Uh, I mean the tie to be tight enough, but not too tight. Because what you're going to do later is to fluff out these tails to create a flower, right? So you want your hair tie to be semi-tight but not too tight. All right, so my tie looks messy, right? You're not gonna give your gift like that. I'm gonna go in and fix a few things. This is what I meant by being very tricky when it comes to wrapping this particular style. So I would, Make sure that these front flaps are actually flat here. So 
So I kind of want to hide it and then make it straight, right? And then making sure my tie here is catching all of that drape and fold, right? So when you're moving, when you're moving these fabrics around, you kind of want to make sure you maintain what you originally did, not lose track of the folds and the drape. And then once you have it, then you can tie it closer. Oops. This is what I meant by it rolling around. All right. I'm going to show you the front view, how it looks now. So this is my tab here again. And the fabric is sort of staying straight now around the bottle. Right? If you want to fix anything that you want to hide the folds, go in and do that. So we're going to do a next step where we're going to fluff the flower up from this side. So ideally you want this band, this twisted band to be kind of sitting on top to hold down this top flap. All right. What we're going to do now is to pick one side of the tail corner. You see if I can do it backwards. And tuck it in, pick your un pick your elastic, one band of the elastic, and then tuck it under. Like this. Pick one of the elastic, tuck your tail in. We're going to do focus on one side first. So what we're going to do here is get the tail down. Now you're creating a little leaf here and your petal is starting to form. You want to open up your petal a little bit here. So that's one side of the flower. We're going to do the other side. Of course, you don't want your rubber band to show. So we're going to do a little trick on how you can um, hide that rubber band. And of course, if you use a skinnier rubber band, then it won't show as much. Right? When you, when you pick up another rubber band, make sure you pick a different layer of the rubber band. So that it won't be competing with the other paddle wrap. We are close to almost an hour and I wanted to only keep our live to be an hour long. So it's not too much for everyone to consume. So we're almost done here just to do a little bit more finishing touch here. So as you can see, the flower is starting to form, right? I'm going to put it down so you can see it when I'm done here. I need to look, have a better view of what I'm doing. <laughs> so you can obviously fluff it, tighten the grip. There we fluff it, get the little leaf out kind of do it until you are satisfied with it to me nothing is always perfect so as long as i get to a good stopping point i will stop doing it 
All right, so it's not as perfect as this other one that I pre-made, obviously. But here you have it. Let me see if you can see. Here you have a bottle wrap with a little flower coming out with two leaves. <laughs> I don't know if you can actually see, but that's the idea of it. <laughs> this one is a lot nicer because I spent at least 15 minutes on this. So with you, I spent what, 10, 15 minutes just now, but I kind of rushed and I wanted to show you every single angle. If you're doing it by yourself, turn on some music, put yourself into a meditation mode. Actually doing Fushiki is very zen if you're not being rushed or being watched, watched by other people, right? So, so if you have some downtime to yourself, take your time and give wrap. It's part of um, meditation to help you enjoy the moment, right? And once you have it, wrap, make sure it's all secure, nicely done. Give yourself a pet in the back saying, good job. I've done a good job here. I'm not gonna give out this gift anymore. <laughs> but thank you. My husband is actually on my left side giving me a pet. <laughs> All right, so that's the style that we have learned today. And I'm gonna kind of give you a lineup of what we have learned today. Uh, go to the left. All right. We learn how to do cute box. We also learn how to do a little basket. I don't think I can fit within the screen. <laughs> anyway, so you get the idea. All right, so we're com coming close to the end of today's live show. If you have watched throughout the whole thing, thank you for watching. I'm very glad that you enjoyed enough to watch the whole thing so again if you haven't heard from earlier this is a um, series of event happening this month and up until before christmas so you can learn how to gift wrap with furoshiki and every session that we have um, will be every weekend and every session that we have will be different techniques that you'll be learning on furoshiki um, it will be around two to three styles depending on the difficulty of the wrap. And so today what you learn are the styles that I've just shown you, the bottle, the cube, and the basket. So next week will be a little bit different. If you want to learn other techniques, you can always look back to our other videos on our YouTube. We have Save Our Life sessions on our in our library. So definitely check back. And that way you can also skip pause and come back to it when you're ready. And so today that's all I have. Thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye.